this is something we do every month with moving moving with MS virtual support group with MS Visa News. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Gretchen Hawley, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. Every month we bring a different topic to you guys and Every webinar that we do, every support group is geared towards helping you get the tools, the knowledge, the exercises that you need to be on your MS journey more confidently, more empowered, and feeling like you're in control of the symptoms that you do have. So today's topic this month in June is strength versus endurance. And I'm really excited to dive into this because a lot of people don't realize this, but there are different ways to train different goals that we have, not necessarily in the sense of function. We've talked a lot before about functional goals and what that means, but there's also different types of goals. Like if you want to improve your speed or improve your strength or improve your stamina, each of those things need to be trained differently. It's not all the same exercises. So that's what we're gonna be reviewing today. Uh, so again, moving with MS Virtual Support Group, I absolutely love MS Visa News and everything they stand for, everything that they promote and help people, especially in rural areas. So I'm super excited to be collaborating with them to offer this to you guys. Huge thank you to MS Visa News for having me. So today's topic is strength versus endurance. And actually, before we even get started, I would love to know what type of goals you're working towards in the comments. So for example, of course, strength and endurance, that's our primary focus today. But what about, well, stamina to me is the same thing as endurance, but some people use the word stamina. So do you have any goals of improving strength? Do you have goals of improving your endurance or your stamina? Do you have goals of improving your speed? Do you have goals of improving your balance, your flexibility? There's no right or wrong answers. I just wanna know what you guys are working towards or what you'd hope to get from exercising. Something that I hear often when my clients are exercising consistently is they'll say, Dr. Gretchen, I'm getting so much stronger, why aren't I walking any faster? Or I'm getting so much stronger, why is my balance still so off? And that's the reason why is what we're gonna be diving into today, but it's really helpful if I can see what you're working towards. Uh, and maybe it's even all of it too. Sharon from Worcester, welcome. Uh, Veronica from Texas. Uh, what is left in the tank when we get overheated? Yeah. Uh, Debbie says strengthening. And Julie's, ooh, working on speed. Good one. Alyssa is core strength. Balance to help with my walking. All of the above. I need more of that heat intolerance. Yeah, let's, um, if I forget to bring it up again, someone remind me when we're done talking about strength and endurance to talk about heat intolerance because that is a huge um, important thing to discuss, especially this time of year. Uh, balance or more good days over bad, goal of improving my balance, stamina, endurance, balance and shoulder flexibility, seeing improvements in all categories. Awesome. Okay. So a decent amount of strength, balance, and endurance and, and speed as well. Okay. So what we're going to be covering is what is strength? What is endurance? When do you need strength and when do you need endurance? And then of course, demonstrations. So these are four questions that I get asked daily, multiple times a day at that. So we will be coming back to these at the end, which is what exercises should I be doing? How many repetitions should I be doing? How many sets should I be doing? And how long do I hold it for? So these are the most common questions. Again, if you guys have any, please feel free to ask further throughout or we can um, save them for the end. But we're gonna answer these throughout today's chat as well. So first and foremost, what is strength training or strengthening? Strength training, the whole goal is to improve your muscle gain to perform a movement. So strength is the amount of force you can put out or the amount of weight that you can lift. So for example, weightlifting, you know, if you're literally lifting up weights or a more functional example is lifting up a laundry basket lifting up the dog food, lifting up something in your home. Do you have the strength to lift something or to put that amount of effort and energy into something? Resistance training. So this could be with resistance loops, rubber bands, pull-ups, 
push-ups, squats. A lot of these are just more exercise related, but that is what strengthening is. How much can, how much force can you put into something, whether it's lifting or pushing or pulling, how much force can you get to improve your movement? Whereas we can compare that to, there we go. Endurance is muscle gain to sustain a movement. So strength is muscle gain to perform, to, to do the thing in the first place, whereas endurance or stamina is muscle gain to sustain a movement. A perfect example is if you want more strength to walk versus you want more strength to walk a longer distance that the first one is strength the second one is more endurance and we train them differently so also with endurance the way that you can see how you're doing with endurance is by asking yourself how many times can i do this before fatiguing whereas with strength if we go back for a second with strength we're not really going for a high number of repetitions in one sitting without rest break we're just looking to use our muscles to get them stronger. But with endurance, we're specifically looking to do as many as we can with good quality, of course, without resting. So examples of endurance training would be things like walking, especially walking longer distances, swimming, running, any form of aerobic exercise is usually considered endurance or stamina. I see some more people came in too in the chat saying walking normal, less foot drop, balance, walking. Yes, a lot of people are working on walking. Walking is my favorite thing to work on, so I'm, I'm glad that you guys are working on that. So strength versus endurance, when do we need it? So the truth is most of the time we need both. We need strength and endurance. Another great example of strength versus endurance is posture strengthening for posture would be the strength to sit up tall or to stand up tall whereas endurance would be can you maintain or sustain that tall position with good posture good quality for two minutes for five minutes for ten minutes for a longer amount of time now it's important to note that you usually will not have great endurance without good strength, whereas you can have good strength without good endurance. Strength usually comes first because strength is getting into the position or doing the thing. Once you have the strength, then we can work on endurance and doing it for a longer period of time. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to wait until you're strong enough to then do endurance. You can still practice both at the same time, but usually they are two components that are being performed either simultaneously or endurance after strength. Just got a fuzzy in my eye. Um, okay, so also someone just said, Rikita says, how do I see the chats? You actually can't see the chat. I can see what you guys are saying, but you guys, I don't think you can see what the others are saying. That's like a go-to webinar thing. So without one, without strength or endurance, we won't be able to either produce as much movement or use that movement over a long enough period of time. So if you don't have enough strength, your steps will be very short for lots of reasons, poor balance or not good enough quality with lifting your leg, but lack of endurance means you won't be able to walk as long. So benefits, so muscular strength and endurance, of course, are important for lots of different reasons. One reason is to increase the ability to do activities, especially functional activities like opening doors, lifting boxes, chopping wood without getting tired. And, and these are just chopping wood is something that most of us don't do but it's a very functional activity but think about the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis in your home even something like getting out of bed getting into and out of the shower getting into and out of a car getting dressed walking to go get the mail there's so many cleaning if you're going to be cleaning in your home there's so many things that we need to do throughout the day that require strength 
but also endurance. Additionally, reducing the risk of injury. The stronger your muscles are and the better endurance you have, the less likely you will get injured. And this is something I mentioned in my book too, which is if you only focus on one category of exercising, for example, if you're only focusing on strength, a lot of the times, not always, but a lot of the times that results in injury. I cannot tell you how many times people with MS and people without MS that I was treating came to the PT clinic to work with me and they would say, oh, I've got so much back pain or hip pain or knee pain. I don't know why, because I'm exercising consistently. And I said, well, that sounds great. What are you doing for exercise? And nine times out of 10, they'd say, I go to yoga classes six days a week or I go swimming five or six days a week. I do this one thing this many days per week. And immediately I'm like, well, that's why. You're only focusing on one form. There's at least 10 different types of forms of exercises. So if you're only focusing on one, not only is that not great because you're ignoring nine others, but also when you're only focusing on one, you're at a higher risk for using muscles that are already strong instead of strengthening the muscles that are weaker. And if you're only strengthening the muscles that are already strong, they're pulling in ways they shouldn't be pulling because they don't have anything counteracting, is that the right word? Uh, counteracting that force. So reducing the risk of injury for sure. Uh, healthier, stronger muscles, stronger bones, the more you practice a multitude of exercises like strengthening and endurance, the better off your bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, everything is gonna be. And then lastly, it allows you to add new and different exercises to your exercise program. No one likes doing the same thing over and over and over again. I'm gonna step back for a second and I shouldn't say no one. I specifically remember a client that I had who loved doing the same thing every day. She did the same exercise routine every day for like 20 years and she loved it. But most people will get bored of that. And so with all these different types of exercises, it keeps you on your toes, it keeps it interesting. And not only is that great for you mentally, but it's really great for neuroplasticity. Okay. So we're gonna review how to train them. Let me go back to the chat. I see I lost my spot here. Um, more people saying that they're working on improving their walking, balance, strength, walking endurance, bowel movements require muscle. Yes, I, so we're not really, we have a, I think we have a whole session coming up about core strengthening. When you focus on your core strength, most of the time, you will also notice improvements in your breathing, your ability to take deep breaths, and your ability to urinate and have bowel movements and reduce um, incontinence. Core strength has so much to do with our bowel and bladder function and our stability, our mobility. Core strength is huge. It's like the center of everything. And with our topic today, you can improve your core, your core strength and your core endurance. Sweeping, yeah, sweeping is a really great functional exercise or functional task that you can improve strength and endurance with. I need exercises to better my walking, balance, and standing. Uh, strength and endurance would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a really great slide that just shares with you how to train each of these different types of exercise. And how many did I put here? One, two, three, four, five, six. This, these are six types of exercises. There's more than that, but these are the main six that I usually work with my clients on. And you train them differently. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a goal of improving your speed, but you're not doing speed-based exercises, you're not gonna improve your speed. That's, that's when you'd come to me and you'd say, Dr. Gretchen, I'm stronger and my walking is better, but I can't walk any faster. Why? Because you're not doing walk, walking speed-based exercises. Or another great one is balance. I hear a decent amount, I'm doing so many strengthening exercises, I'm so much stronger, but my balance isn't any better. And I'll ask, well, what balance exercises are you doing? And I'll say, well, none, I'm focusing on strengthening. So to improve your strength, you need to do strengthening exercises, and that could be any sort of challenge with a weight or resistance band, or maybe even just body weight, as I mentioned earlier, squats, 
if you're looking to improve your endurance, you have to do endurance or stamina based exercises. And the way you do that is doing something for a longer period of time and or with less rest. So we're gonna do some examples together in a second here, but an example if we're talking about walking for endurance, walking would mean walk a longer distance or practice your exaggerated walking, which we've talked about in past webinars, with less rest in between. So you might do 10 steps instead of seven or 12 steps instead of 10. So you just do more repetitions before you rest. You can still rest, it just would be less rest between. So another way that you can view this is still 10 repetitions, but instead of a 30 second rest, it's a 15 second rest. So it's really up to you and what feels good to you. Um, for speed, well, if you want to improve your speed, you have to do speed-based exercises. If you want to improve your balance, you have to do balance exercises. If you want to improve your function, your exercises must be functional. If you want to improve your flexibility, you must perform stretches. And not only that, but to take things one step further, and this is not the goal of today's call, but it's worth mentioning, it's important that you're focusing on the right muscle groups. And the reason that I say that is because similar to a story that I mentioned earlier, quite frequently, I will have clients say, Dr. Gretchen, my muscles are so tight and so spastic and I don't know why I stretch all the time. And I ask them, great, what stretches do you do? And they tell me all these stretches, but none of them are for the muscle that they're complaining about. So for example, if you have hamstring tightness, like behind your knee, but you're not doing any hamstring stretches, you could be doing calf stretches, hip flexor stretches, um, hip abductor stretches, inner thigh. But if nothing's for the hamstrings, then of course your hamstrings are still going to feel tight. So let's take this one step further. Um, let me just look in the chat. I hope everyone and little creatures are all outside. Finn is in my room. He was shaking, but he's okay now. Um, Julie says she can't hear me. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, Jamila, is it okay for people with MS to do functional training three times a week? Um, yes, and, and we'll get into how, how long to do them, how many repetitions, that's all that good stuff. We'll get back to the three times a week in a second. Um, I just wanna do some demonstrations first. So I wanna show you a demonstrate, three different demonstrations, and we can do more if you want more. So one example is holding a mug. And let me know in the chat if you guys have any form of hand goals, like hand strengthening. So for example, I have my handy dandy water glass here. Do you drop things? If so, you might have strength, but not endurance if you're dropping things. So one thing that you can do for holding a mug, and this is true for anything. My second example is holding a brush. It could be holding your phone even. So the way that you would work this activity for strengthening is by grasping the mug. So I don't, I just have this glass here. Let me take a sip. So here is my glass that I'm holding on to. So the way that we would want to use this for our strength training, not endurance, but for our strength training would be, and you're not going to see much movement here because the glass isn't going to move, but with your hands, you're going to squeeze, squeeze as hard as you can and then relax and squeeze and relax and squeeze. And you, you're barely seeing it. Maybe you'll see it this way. No, you can't really see much, but I'm squeezing and I can feel my palm muscles and my finger muscles working. I'm only holding for maybe a second or two. Hold, 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 relax. And I'm only holding this up so you can see it. If you're doing this on your own, you can hold it up, it's more functional, but you also could do this just with it on the table. You don't actually have to be holding it up. You would just squeeze and relax, especially if you're nervous that you might drop it. So that's what the strength training would be. Endurance training would be holding it longer. So there's two ways you can do this. Option one is just holding it here. And you're trying your best to not let it slip out of your hand. Just how long can you hold it here? 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, five minutes. How long can you hold it? That's endurance training. The other way that you can practice endurance training 
is combine it with strength training. So you squeeze just like you were with strength training, but squeeze, 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 keep holding. You're not just holding for two to three seconds, you're holding for maybe 10 seconds, 15, 30, however long you can. And then you set it down and rest, give your hand a break. And then when you're ready, get back into it and hold, hold, hold. So that's how you can train for holding something. I can't tell you how many clients I've had that said that they've dropped um, little cups of yogurt, they've dropped mugs, they've, they've just dropped things due to lack of hand strength and or hand endurance. Let me know if you guys have any questions on that one. Um, my doctor wants me to do neuro PT. Um, neuro physical therapy is it's kind of similar to MS specific physical therapy. We have a whole webinar on MS specific physical therapy and how that's different from orthopedic PT. Let me grab that link for you guys. So this is where you'll find all of the webinar recordings. I just sent that to everyone. Um, Julie can hear now. Awesome. Uh, please address being in a wheelchair. Yeah, so all of these exercises that we're talking about can be done in a wheelchair. Um, Debbie, handwriting is the goal. It has decreased. So handwriting, I'm so glad you mentioned that. One, one thing that you can do is get a tool if you can to help with that. So for example, the pens and pencils are so narrow, you could get something to really bulk this up and or just get really thick pens and you'd practice holding it however you normally hold the pen, this is how I hold it, and you'd squeeze, so hold, 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 your squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, so you're practicing squeezing and relaxing and you're, you'll feel your muscles working. The other way for endurance is just holding. How long can you hold a pen like this for? And maybe even you have it down on paper. How long can you hold it like this for? Then you can take it a step further. Once you have the, the hand and finger strength and endurance, then try to write. How many words can you write before fatiguing? And you would just wanna push it a little bit more each time as you get stronger and as you improve your endurance. That's a really great example. Um, I don't drop things, but I can tell my grip has weakened. Yeah. So, and of course, you can always improve your grip strength with tools like, um, I think that it's called the Grip Master. So, just squeezing, relaxing, and you're squeezing against resistance. You could use a stress ball. Those things are great options. But never forget that one of the best things you can do is grab the thing that's hard for you to do. So, if it's a pen, grab the pen and squeeze the pen. If it is a glass, grab the glass and squeeze the glass. Um, I get a lot of cramps in my hands, toes, calves, mostly at night. Are there exercises I can do to prevent them? So if anyone watching has any tricks for the trade for reducing crap, cramps, especially at night, let me know in the comments and I can read them out loud. One thing that I can say that tends to work a lot for my Missing Link members is stretching right before bed in the specific muscle groups that get tight. So you mentioned your hands, toes, calves is a specific one, so that's good. You'd want to stretch your calves. But for your hands, is it this side or this side? Or is it your fingers? for your toes is at the top of your toes at the bottom of your toes so get really specific on where those tight muscles are and where those cramping muscles are and stretch them out before immediately before you go to bed take 15 to 20 minutes before you fall asleep and do your stretches then and that can be really helpful i do have some clients who uh, say that magnesium right before bed has helped them so that could be something someone mentioned a stress ball yes you can absolutely use a stress ball what is MS specific PT? Yeah, so if we have time at the end, we can get into that. Again, I, I'll put the link in the um, the questions box, the chat box to send to you. If you go to that link, you will see all of our past webinars that we've had where we go full, we have a full hour long presentation on MS specific PT versus regular PT. So if you're new to us, I don't know that we'll have time today. We might have time at the end to go through the basics, but definitely check out that link and you'll be able to um, learn all about it. Um, let's see, we have someone saying, Angela, you might be able to slip the pen into a bike bike grip. And I know what you're talking about. Um, Sandy says magnesium glycinate for cramps. 
uh, Gwen, there are some arthritis tools. Yeah, so there are so many tools and conveniently enough, our webinar for next month in July are some of my favorite tools that we're gonna be reviewing. So yeah, there, um, Gwen was saying that there's a lot of arthritis tools that can help with doing things with your hands even if you don't have arthritis. Um, there are two people, I know them from Instagram, but they both have YouTube. Um, actually, let me grab the links for you guys. So let me go to YouTube. One of them is uh, Lindsay DeLong, and her company is called Equip Me OT. She has a lot of, oh, this isn't her, hold on. Where is her page? Here she is. Equip Me OT. So she's on YouTube as Equip Me OT. I'll send that to you guys here. So that is my friend Lindsay. She's an occupational therapist. She has a lot of really great tools just for day-to-day -day life to help you around the house. But then my friend Cheryl Crow, um, she has arthritis life. Um, she is also an occupational therapist and she has a lot of tips and tricks and hacks specifically for hands. So I'll send you guys that one too. She is an easy name to remember, Cheryl Crow. Um, are you going to show us some of the stretches? Yeah, we can do some stretch. We're going to do some um, legs, leg examples as my third example but again we have an entire session in our repertoire of webinars on stretching as well oh someone says cbd lotion helps for the cramps that's awesome uh sandy says there's several different types of magnesium glycinate is good for cramps yeah there there are a lot of different types of magnesium um, my occupational therapist recommended a pen by Dr. Grip called Center of Gravity. It is weighted near the ink end of the pen and makes it a lot easier to write. It is also thicker and has a rubber grip. Ooh, that's really great. Let me get that for you guys. So it's Dr. Grip weighted pen. Oh yeah, it's on Amazon. Center of gravity, I found it. It's on sale for $9, down from 10. Let me send this to you guys. Um, how did I copy, paste? This is gonna be a really long link. I don't know why it's so long, but that is the link to the weighted pen. Thank you for sharing that, that's awesome. Um, I've always been told, wait, did I miss something? Sorry, I lost my, my place. Occupational therapist recommend. Okay, I'm back up to speed. Um, I can't click on the links that you shared. If you can't click on them, maybe try copying them and pasting them somewhere else, like maybe in an email or in a Google document or something and see if that works. Or copy them and then paste them into the browser. I don't use GoToWebinar too often, so I'm not exactly sure how they come across, but as, as long as you can copy them and paste them, that should work. Uh, Angela, handle grip used for bikes, uh, but you can slip utensils and some pens into them to give you better grip. I love that. I've had some handle grips for bikes. Some of my clients have used them on their rollators or on their walking sticks or trekking poles to make the grip a little bit bigger. Um, I've always been told for helping with cramps, do magnesium. I haven't heard this one, bisglossinate in the morning, vitamin D3 mid-morning, and calcium at bedtime. I'll send this to you guys. Um, Marla, you say you're sending these links to us, but I'm not getting them. Hmm, are you guys not getting the links that I'm sending? Someone else says, yes, copy and pasting is working. So some people must be getting the links. Um, let me know if you're getting the links or not. If not, I can save these elsewhere. Um, let me start doing that in case you're not getting them. So the Dr. Grip pen, let me grab that one for you. What is that? I sent that one. What other links have I sent? Um,
Okay. The name of the pen is Dr. Grip, Pilot, Dr. Grip, Center of Gravity. I'm not sure why that's, I'm not sure why some of you are getting the links and others aren't. Cheryl Crow, that's what it was, the YouTube. Cheryl Crow is um, C-H-E-R-Y-L, Crow. What I will do is, let me go back. I wanna grab all the links that I was sending you guys. Cheryl Crow, and then I also gave you the link for Lindsay DeLong. Grab that. There we go. Um, moving with MS. Okay, so there's a link. I'm going to say it to you out loud if you're the one of the unfortunate ones not getting the, the links that I'm sending, but I will also send it. So what I will do is I'm going to take all these links that I'm sending you and I will email them to you if I have your email. I only have your email if you have registered for my um, through my website, which is not the same as registering through here. So I'll type it here. The website that you want, so open up a browser right now. And the website that you want to go to is https colon slash slash www. So, you know, what every website starts with. And then it's drgretchenholly.com. So D O C T O R G R E T C H E N H A W L E Y dot com slash moving with MS and and register there. If you're registered there, I can send you guys an email tomorrow with these links because again, I, I don't know why some of you are getting them and others aren't. Um, I can also put it here. Let me make it bigger for you guys. slideshow. So this is the website that you can go to. I'll keep that up for a second. Um, okay, so copy and pasting is working for some people. I'm getting them in the chat, getting them in the chat. They are there, just not active links. Okay, so some of you guys are getting them, some didn't, some aren't. Um, I, I'm gonna, I will send you the YouTube video links for my friend Lindsay DeLong, the occupational therapist, who has a lot of helpful tools. Um, my, also an occupational therapist, my friend Cheryl Crow, I'll send you the link for that, and the link for the pen, the Center of Gravity pen. If, you're, if you click this link and you're on my email list, I will send that to you tomorrow. Person not getting the links, she needs to expand the arrow in the upper right corner. Oh, I do see that arrow. Okay, cool. Thank you, Denise. Yes, links should be in the same window as the place we are asking questions. Awesome. I can't copy. I tap on the box, but it won't do anything. There in the chat, on the phone. Okay, so if you're on a phone or maybe even a tablet, um, maybe that's when where they're not working. Okay. All right, getting links immediately. Okay, for stiff, okay, someone sent, oh, Renee sent one of my videos. So for stiff and achy joints, one of my YouTube videos. I'll send it for those that are receiving it, but again, don't worry if you're not getting these. I will, um, oh my gosh, was I not sharing my slide with you? Let me get this out. I'm, I'm keeping a list of the links that I'll send you guys. Okay. I got 75% of them. How do you register without signing up for the paid? So there's nothing paid. I don't know if I was just showing you this to you, this to you guys or not. If I wasn't, I'll make it bigger again. I can't remember if I just shared this screen. Um, so this is nothing paid. All this does, if you if you click this, Let me know if you, I think you can still see my screen. Um, it just brings you to this page. Um, it's our virtual MS support group, meeting takeaways. So you just put your first name, last name, and email. This does not, there's, there's no paid thing associated with this. The reason that I have this is because every now and then, not every time, but every now and then when things like this happen, I can email everyone 
about what we talk about on this. You will be subscribed to my email list. So when I, for example, as I mentioned earlier, my book is launching next month. So you'll get emails about my book launch. So it's not only about our Moving With MS webinars. So if you don't want to get any emails from me, don't do this. But if you're okay with getting emails from me, um, then definitely sign up for this. You won't, there's, there's nothing paid though. So you won't have to worry about that. All right, so I think that's all so far. Um, Pam says, how much magnesium glycinate? Um, Debbie says, I signed up again. I didn't receive them in the email. Um, I didn't send an email yet, so I will send these links in an email tomorrow. Um, getting them on my tablet, okay. And then, um, yeah, so I'll send these links tomorrow. So if you're if you've clicked on this link and you've submitted that, you'll get an email from me tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's get back into. It. We're almost done, but I just want to make sure that we get through the oops the demonstrations. Um, so brushing hair, similar idea. Grab a brush, grab a hairbrush, and practice squeezing the brush and then relaxing, squeezing and then relaxing. Additionally, practice grasping the brush and then lifting your arm to touch the back of your head and then lower down. Squeeze the brush, lift, and down. And to be honest, for this, you don't always need a brush at first. You could not hold on to anything and first just get the shoulder mobility and the elbow mobility and hand mobility to touch the back of your head and then down and touch and down. But for endurance, it would be holding up here. So this would be more so if you're blow drying your hair, not just brushing it, hold here. How long can you keep your arm here before it starts falling down due to weakness or poor stamina, poor endurance? And then lastly, for walking. So this I'll back up here and do some demonstrations. But strengthening to improve your walking would be something like lifting your legs, whereas endurance would be practice walking for five minutes instead of three minutes or instead of one minute. So you're practicing walking for a longer amount of time. Another way that you can practice endurance for walking is with the same exercise as lifting your legs, but doing more repetition. So instead of doing 10 repetitions, do 15, as long as you can have good quality with that. Or as we mentioned before, fewer rest breaks. So it's still 10, but instead of resting for a full minute between each set, only rest for 30 seconds. So it requires that you use your energy with less breaks. And these are all the places. Someone uh, just sent a message earlier saying for stiff muscles, do a specific exercise on my page. This is my YouTube page, free videos, lots of them there. My Facebook page, I post a lot. Instagram, I post daily. I've got a podcast, I've got a website. Um, so these are just some resources that you can check out. But before our time ends, I do want to um, show some more demonstrations of strengthening versus uh, endurance. I do see Denise is asking, if you're practicing endurance to blow dry your hair, should you hold it longer even when it aches or stop when it aches? It depends what aching means for you. If aching is pain, stop. No, no exercise should ever be causing pain. But if it's aching in the sense that, oh, my muscles are tired, it's okay to hold that for a little bit. You don't wanna push too far into fatigue. But if it's just more of, oh, this is hard, that's okay to keep pushing through. But if it's any type of pain or discomfort, that's when you wouldn't wanna push through. Okay. Um, all right, so let me show you guys some examples. Um, where did it go? There I am, okay. Hopefully you can see me. My, hopefully my light is shining bright enough. The fire truck was just out there, so uh, hopefully it will be good from here. Okay, so for example, for leg exercises, one of my favorite exercises is seated marching. So someone earlier mentioned in a wheelchair, this is an exercise that you can do. So you're in a wheelchair, you're gonna practice lifting one leg up and down. However high you can, whether it's this much, did you even see that, it's so little. If that's all you can lift, amazing, just lift that much. If you can lift a little higher, Great, it doesn't matter how high, just lift with however high you can. So slowly up and down. So if we're doing this exercise for strength training, 
I would tell you to do as many as you can with good quality and then stop and rest. So that might be 10 for someone else. It might be five for someone else. It might be three for someone else. It might be 15. It doesn't matter. Just how many can you do with good quality before you get fatigued Then stop and rest. But if we're working on endurance training, I would tell you to do more. So instead of just three, push for six. Instead of just 10, push for 12. So you're just going to do more. You're going to do more in one sitting. Or I would have you still just stick with five, but a shorter rest break. If you normally did five and then you would rest for 30 seconds, we're only going to rest for 15 seconds and then you do more. So that's the difference between strengthening versus endurance. Now let's add another component into it, speed. A few of you said you wanted to work on speed with walking. You therefore then want to do this exercise for speed as well, which would look something like this. So you're going a little bit faster. You're not going really fast, but just a little bit faster. Train your muscles to work quicker. If you don't train them to work faster here, they're not gonna work faster when you're here, when you're standing up and wanting to improve your walking. So th that's the difference between strength, endurance, and speed. Earlier, we were talking a bit about stretching. So some of my favorite seated stretches, ex stretching exercises that everyone can do is put one leg forward. This is for your hamstring, the back of your thigh. Sit up tall. This knee is as straight as possible and shift forward. Never do this in a wheeled chair like I'm in right now. This actually makes me feel pretty unstable but this is what that would look like. And you should feel the stretch on the back part of your thigh. So like the, anywhere between behind your knee and behind your bottom, that bone that we sit on. And then you'd wanna do the same thing on the other side. Other leg straightens, sit up tall and hinge forward. So again, this is a hamstring stretch. If you wanted to do a, let's see, an outer hip stretch, that's one of my other favorites is a figure four. You, if possible, you'd grab your leg and place it on the opposite lower thigh. If you cannot get into this position, all you're gonna do is just cross one ankle over the other. Instead of bringing it up here, you keep it here. Regardless of which position you're in, you sit up tall and hinge forward. And ideally, you'll feel the stretch somewhere on the outside of your hip or outside of your thigh. This is what's, what it would look like if you were up here. You feel that now. Of course, you would do this on both sides. To do a calf stretch, I wasn't really focusing on stretching today, so I don't have, I have my cane. I don't have a cane out. Um, but for a calf stretch, I like to use props. I like to use, uh, do I have anything? I like to use a cane or a walking stick or my leg lifter, a bathrobe belt. So you'd want to put something that's not stretchy on the bottom of your toes, right in this area and pull towards you as you're sitting up tall. And then you should feel that stretch on the back of your lower leg. And you're, again, you're sitting up tall. If you're really flexible, you can hinge forward a bit and that will increase the stretch even further. Okay. Um, I know today is not, today's focus wasn't stretching, so that was just a quick overview. We do have a webinar on that from uh, previous months, so definitely check out, check that out. And that reminds me, I'll include the, the link to our past webinars for you guys too, in case you weren't getting the links. Copy. Um, I'll include that there. Um, all right, and that's all I've got for you today. Again, next, next month we're meeting on July 10th. That is where I'm going to be showing you pictures and links and videos. I was able to, I went to the annual MS conference this past, or we're in June. Yeah, it was this month. It was the beginning of the month. Um, and I met up with the company Psionic, who has their neural sleeve, which is an electrical stimulation device 
to help improve walking. It helps you bend your knee and lift your ankle. And I got to try it on and feel it and it was really cool. So I have videos of me doing that. I'm gonna share those with you. I'll share my thoughts on, on that with you and my thoughts on a lot of other helpful tools as well. If you're curious about any tools, let me know in the, um, in the chat right now and I can make sure to include them in my presentation. Um, and let me just go through and see if I missed anything. Oh, so heat intolerance, yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, the thing about heat intolerance is that heat intolerance is when anything causes your core temperature to rise by at least half of a degree. And a lot of people think that that's the temperature outside, which yes, 100%, but it's much more than that. Stress, physical, emotional, mental stress causes our, our core temperature to rise. Exercise causes our core temperature to rise. The barometric pressure outside, even if you're inside in air conditioning, causes your core temperature to rise. Warm or hot showers causes your core temperature to rise. All of these things can cause heat intolerance because they increase your core temperature by at least half of a degree, if not more. And so this time of year when it is getting hotter, it does occur more often because of the temperature and barometric pressure, especially if it's humid where you are. So if that's the case, make sure that you are sipping ice cold water throughout the day, but especially before, during, and after exercise, or even before, during, and after your shower, before, during, and after you get dressed, whenever you experience that heat intolerance. Additionally, next month, we're gonna go over some, as I mentioned, helpful tools. I'm going to include some of my favorite cooling devices too. Wearing those throughout the day at home, even if you're inside an air conditioning, it can really help reduce heat intolerance. Um, marching from a chair, where are our arms? Wherever you want your arms to be, on armrest, on your lap, folded like this, wherever you want them to be. Cannot get my foot up off the floor to, for the knee to lift, that's okay. I would encourage you to rewatch, if you need motivation in this, I would encourage you to rewatch our uh, Moving with MS virtual support group that we had on our um, on neuroplasticity and I explain why that's okay. If Even if you have zero movement, you should still practice the exercise. What about stretching to stand up? Str oh, stretching to stand up straight. Yes, um, Kanita, I would suggest just because we're running, we only have two minutes left. I would suggest you watch our recording on posture. Um, that is one of that's one of the big things that we focused on there, stretching and strengthening for posture. Um, for those stretches, how many reps or hold? How long? So, and I explain this in my book. Uh, there's three different types of stretching. And there's no research saying that one is better than the other. So one is you'd hold for about 20 to 30 seconds and you would do that two to three times each side. Another option is you'd hold for only two to three seconds, but you do that 30 times each side. And then another is prolonged static. So that would be more of you're holding for like five minutes, seven minutes. So those are the different options. I usually suggest my clients try all three and see which feels better for them. Do you feel looser after one or the other? Um, reminder, hinge forward, don't fall forward. Yes. What is the benefit of opening your hips like in yoga? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Can you run through the slides again for me to copy? Um, I don't, we only have one minute left now, probably less than, less than that. These usually, I know they haven't been uploaded right away, but usually these should, recordings should be up within a week, if not within a few days. So um, for the slides, again, make sure that you check the recording. Um, what is the benefit of opening, oh, I already looked it down. Oh, what are the benefits in yoga poses? Um, too much to get into right now. Yoga is beneficial for lots of reasons. It more so than I know that in yoga they do say hip opening. They use that phrase a lot. Any form of hip mobility, bringing your hips open and closed and up and down, any form of hip mobility is usually going to help improve your mobility for walking. So that's going to be great. But also the more mobility you have, the less tightness and the less pain and aches. Um, Eastem, yes, I will mention that I don't have too much 
personally, like tools that I've tried for e-stim for bladder, um, but we can talk about it. I'm gonna put that e-stim for bladder. Um, my website is uh, drgretchenholly.com. To my website to sign up for the presentation is drgretchenholly.com forward slash moving with MS. Let me get back to it. I'll share that slide again. So this is the website that you want to go to if, if you want to get on my email list so that you get the links that I'll send. Um, thank you for another great session. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. For those of us in Canada, we apologize for all the smoke. Unfortunately, many of us are greatly suffering here as well. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, just what we've experienced here, I can't imagine being any closer. That's I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, I really love your YouTube shorts. Yay, thank you. Should marching be done daily? Exercise in general should be about five or six days a week, not never seven. The best tool I found is, Dr. is Gretchen Holly. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, great information and demonstration is always awesome. Your sessions and you are incredibly helpful. Good, I'm so glad, awesome. Okay, well, that's all we went a little bit over. I apologize for that. Um, but as always, I say this every time, but I truly mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in today, for participating. I love seeing, even though you guys can't see each other in the chat, I love seeing what you guys are saying and participating. It really helps me be able to help you more if I know why you're joining, what you're interested in, and all of that. Um, if you are on my email list, I will send an email tomorrow with the link for you guys to get access to all of the recordings from these Moving with MS virtual support groups. I'll also send the link for the Dr. Grip pen that was mentioned. I'll send the YouTube link for Lindsay DeLong, occupational therapist, and Cheryl Crow, occupational therapist. One of my YouTube videos was shared by someone to help with achy joints, and so I'll share with that. So you'll be receiving five links from me tomorrow if you are on my email list. Also, one last thing, shameless plug, my book on MS-specific physical therapy and exercises to help improve walking balance and strength launches in one month. And so if you're not on my wait list for that, I'll include my link there. Basically, if you're on my wait list and if you purchase a book during the first week of launching, I have a bunch of free bonuses for you guys, like an exercise PDF with all the exercises in the book and a few other things. So definitely um, look into that. A bunch of people saying thank you. You're very welcome. Karen resent the email. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome. All right. That is all. Have a wonderful night. I hope you guys have power. I think the fire trucks just left, so we'll be good here at some point soon. Thanks for hanging in there with me, especially with the power outage and, and some delays. But I appreciate you. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next month. Have a good one.